Hey there everyone, this is Jeff Perkins with JD Cutlery putting together another quick video on some of the new Zero Tolerant 0055s. Um, this is a collaboration with GTC Knives. Uh, the custom maker is Gus T. Uh, Sencini. Not sure if I said that quite right, but uh, that is, is the uh, custom maker's name. Um, GTC knives are some very, very nice uh, knives out of, uh, I believe, Central America. Um, the different angles that they put on all the different GTC knives are always very stunning. Lots of uh, compound grinds in the blades and lots of very angular cuts to the handles. So I was really happy to see the collaboration come out between GTC and Zero Tolerance. And uh, this one is another uh, example of Zero Tolerance taking it to the next level. Now, as you can see, I do have one here that is taken apart. I don't typically uh, do any videos with taken apart knives, but this one is very unique. Um, right off the bat, I will make the statement that if you are not used to taking knives apart, if you don't do it frequently, you don't have experience with it, do not take this knife apart. I was sitting here pulling my hair out trying to get this knife back together. Getting the blades centered uh, was quite... A, an interesting process once I finally figured it out they went boom 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 but uh, they were a little tough to get uh, get started so since we're gonna do this a little differently let's go ahead and pull out the anodized ones real quick just because I do want to show you guys the uniqueness of this knife show you kind of what they've they've done and how Zero Tolerance has really stepped up what they're doing with some of this stuff. So, standard pieces, got all your nice little screws right off the bat. Second knife that Zero Tolerance has put a titanium pocket clip on. So, very happy to see that because, uh, of course, I can add a little additional color to it. So, Nice little uh, titanium, looks like it's kind of a stamped out type of titanium pocket clip, but compared to their normal spring steel, uh, I'm very happy with this. So you've got a titanium pocket clip. I'm not going to go through all the nuts and bolts right at this second. I'm going to start off, of course, with the part that everybody's interested in. That's this uh, spring-loaded flipper tab. They call it the SLT spring-loaded tab. And what happens is, as the knife is shut, all that's sticking up is that little piece here. You pull it back, it's ready to be deployed, then you pull it, flip it, and she goes back up in. So when that knife is open, the flipper tab is inside. I was very, very happy to see when I took this knife apart that it is uh, Torx wrenched on there and did not come apart. I was envisioning all kinds of nightmares trying to work on this knife because I didn't know for sure if this was all going to be attached or if when I took this knife apart everything was going to go flying with spring shooting out and that type of thing. So very very happy with that. Really like that cool compound I guess you'd call that a modified Tonto blade. That is just a crazy grind on that thing. You are looking at S35VN on these. So S35VN. Uh, serial number on this one is 537. So that is the blade. A couple of the different nice things that they have done on this. Zero Tolerance doesn't typically do a whole lot of the uh, milling out. They've really lightened up this knife quite a bit. They've done a lot of extensive milling. 
one of the things that they have not done very frequently is the lock bar insert has the detent built in. That is fantastic. That's one thing that I wish they would do on all of their knives because if you get a detent problem on most of their other models, uh, I believe the uh, ZT0561, uh, some of those came out with the detent ball in the lock bar, but that was that's about it as far as what I'm aware of. Every other one has it built right into the lock bar. So if you have a problem with it, you're kind of up a creek because there's no getting it off that lock bar. Where if you have a problem with this one, you contact Zero Tolerance and because they are a fantastic company, are really good about parts, they'll probably just send you a new lock bar insert with your detent in it and you will be all set. So definitely one of the nice upgrades I was very happy to see. Um, these inserts came apart a little bit easier than a lot of them. Sometimes you really have to grab them with pliers and really work them to get the, the inserts off. So everything is milled out nicely. Lots of different patterns going on in the titanium. It is uh, tip-up carry left or right-handed, so they did put, put the screws on both sides. Another part that I'm very happy about is their pivot. Just like the uh, 920, uh, they've got it chamfered out. Pivot goes right into that spot, locks into the handle with... Uh, with the little uh, extended piece right there. Locks in real nice. I do like that they put these two little notches in there because on the 920, as you're putting this thing all back together, ooh, that sucker. These things are very tight. So I'm not gonna force anything. There's really no need for me to put it in right now, but that slides in, locks right in, your notches, or at the top and bottom and you're good to go. Holds it in tight. They did a good job. As you can see they've chamfered out. That's where your uh, where that flipper deal is sliding in there. So when I went to put these back together, first one I put together, got it all back together, everything looked good. Whonk, blade over to the side, wouldn't open up nicely was all kinds of a problem. So I had to play with this thing and play with this thing and play with this thing. So the order I ended up having to go with was lock bar, pivot, bearings, all your lube, blade, bearing, pivot, uh, then the handle back on, lightly screwing this together. Then I flipped it around with the blade still open Put your screws through the handle, through your cool little aluminum spacer in the back. Then I took the blade and folded it so the blade was at this angle here. That then held the blade in the right place. By popping the lock and putting the blade over there, then tightening this handle, the two handle screws back down here first, then coming in and finishing the pivot, it allowed that to center up to uh, the point that it was centered up coming from the factory. Now, a lot of these aren't perfectly centered. Uh, I think only one, well, there were a couple out of the 10 that I got that were perfectly centered. A lot of them were off just a slight bit. Not a big deal. They still flip great, but uh, without going in that order, this thing was a nightmare. The first one took me probably an hour to get right. Once I got it right, we moved ahead and we will uh, continue to work on this knife. Because there for a little bit, I was thinking, wow, I got 10 knives and I won't be ordering any more of these. Once I figured it out, this will definitely be one that you see more of from me. Aluminum uh, backspacer is pretty cool looking. 
it is blue. There is no changing that color, at least that I am able to do. So I'm not going to go through each and every one of the screws. I just thought I'd give you an idea what everything looked like. Classic zero tolerance bearings. So that is what a typical zero tolerance bearing looks like in case you've never actually taken one apart. But again, I would highly recommend not taking this knife apart if you are not used to it. Uh, if you do not take knives apart frequently, don't mess with this one. This is not a beginner knife to get back together. So, what we're really here for, of course, is to take a look at the ones I've anodized. So this one, I want a nice uh, base green, did some sanding, got that uh, bronze patina look. I did go solid bronze on the pocket clip. Again, blue backspacer, not much I can do about it. And again, green with sanding to give that uh, bronze patina look. Now, I talked about that flipper tab. Again, that flipper tag comes out. Once you get to that point, you hit the part where you can go ahead and flip it if you don't like your finger slip. Um, they are very nice and smooth. My wife had a little bit of an issue opening it, but my daughter was able to. So the detent is not too terribly strong. I mean, it's, it's not a weak detent. It's probably perfectly designed for how this knife operates, but it flips with authority. So very cool looking knife. I really like this solid and then patina look on some of these. You've seen me do it on the 801s. This again is the same type of finish. I did do up uh, three more 801s, so you will see those out soon. Um, but really cool little knives. Um, centering's pretty good on that one. There's your backspacer. And one more quick flip. Man, I really like that blade. It, this knife fits nicely in the hand. It's a little narrow at the end. I love that they've put a lanyard hole in it. You know me, all of these should have a lanyard on them, but I was so excited to get a video up and some pictures up and get some of these moving that uh, I didn't put the lanyards on yet. So if you order one of these, there's a very high likelihood that it will come with a lanyard, but they're not currently on the knife right now. Uh, next one, I went with a, it's a purple bronze color. Um, the lower voltages do fingerprint up. So as I mess this thing up or fingerprint it up, it changes the color. Um, so it goes more of a muted bronze. If I grab my cloth with a little bit of Windex on it, do use real Windex, don't use the cheap stuff. Wow, look at that, it looks bronze. Dry it just a little bit, and boom, look at that purple popping out. Now this one does, and it doesn't show up real good in the video, right here, it's got more purple than everywhere else. Everywhere else, it's a cool purple bronze solid base, but there is a little bit more purple right here. You can kind of see it as you use it. It totally disappears. You don't notice it. Um, so everyday carry, this knife is going to look more like this because you are going to have your fingerprints all over it. Man, these things just flip nice. I really like that tab. I like how that tab folds up in there and you don't have anything protruding. Now, by that not protruding, you lose that uh, little bit of finger safety that you have with a lot of flippers. But it's just so unique, unique that you've got one that folds up. Again, titanium pocket clip. Everything's screwed in. Other thing I want to mention on these knives, some people will get this knife, they'll say, oh man, the, the blade's not perfectly centered. This is not a knife that you're going to crank down that pivot screw. If you crank it down, it will not open. 
So you've got to find the perfect balance point of it's in enough that it opens smoothly, but it's not out so far that you got blade wobble. You don't have any blade wobble on any of these. They've all been adjusted nicely. As you can see, this one is a little bit over to the pocket clip side. That is because of the way this uh, pivot is made. You've got the screw on one side. A lot of times, if you've got the blade over to this side, you tighten that screw and it pulls it. So, because you can't tighten the pivot on this side, there's not a whole lot of extra adjustment. This one's only a slight bit off. As you can see, it flies open. This thing opens great. Centering's just a hair off, like I said. You can see it's off a little bit there. Definitely not rubbing or anything. There's your blue backspacer again. Just a cool design. I really like this. Um, so that bronze one is definitely a little uh, fingerprint prone. Got a nice uh, gold yellow one. Got a little bit of oil on it. Unfortunately, a little oil up by the pivot. And boom, we hit the blue pocket clip to match the blue backspacer. Very happy with the way this one turned out. I didn't know if I was going to be able to match that uh, blue very good, but uh, it turned out really nice. So this is just a straight yellow gold with the blue pocket clip. And it matches the backspacer very nicely. So very good match there. Uh, centering on this one is just about perfect. Again, a hair over to the pocket clip side. Not rubbing, not affecting anything. That's how a number of these came in. So not terribly worried about it. Uh, Again, pull her back to the stopping point, then just give her a nice light switch motion, and you've got her going. So, nice yellow with blue pocket clip. Um, I did go with a two tone. This one's got some funky greens to it, some high greens throughout it, and then it has been stonewashed and then re-anodized blue. So all the stone washing on this has been anodized again with a blue color to try and tie in that uh, backspace or some. Again, very cool looking knife. I am very pleased with the way a number of these have turned out. I do have 10 of them to work on. Uh, I was working late last night trying to get some of these done. Oh, not good to hit the camera. <laughs> um, was working late at night last night trying to get these done and just could not get the last three done. The last one I did just didn't want to cooperate. Sometimes as you anodize, you just don't get what you expect. And it wasn't the way I liked it. So I just had to call it quits. But... Uh, this one's really cool looking in person. Again, funky two-tone green with a nice heavy uh, stone wash and then re-anodized blue. Um, this one here, we went with a pretty cool purple. I did more sanding on the flat on this one. There's still a light haze of what you would call patina look on this and then anodized at bronze. That is not a scratch there, that's just fingerprinting. Same with this side, see you can see the haze just a little bit more. Because I do like, I think that patina look looks nice on these. So you got a slight bit of a patina with that purple base and the nice bronze in there. Went purple on the pocket clip. This one is just about perfectly centered. And maybe a hair off to the pocket clip side, but just about perfect. So, very cool looking knife. That blade is just wicked looking. Um, very sharp. The, the 
edge geometry that they've got on this is nice. It is a knife that I would be able to sharpen on the wicked edge, but honestly, factory edge is pretty good on this one. So, cool looking knife. Nice purple with bronze. Fingerprinting it up a little bit so you see what it looks like. The purple doesn't fingerprint much, but uh, that smoothed out bronze does fingerprint up some. So it's been kind of a satin, satin sanded to give it that little bit of patina look. So that is the purple bronze. And we will jump in on the last high voltage blue uh, with a bronze. I, I left, I did more or left more of the blue in it as I sanded this one to give it a little bit more of a patina look. Um, really cool looking effect. We went bronze on the pocket clip on this one. The other one I matched the purple, but this one we went with the, blonde, the bronze. It's a nice high voltage blue. Um, the blue of the backspacer is a little different. It didn't match perfect. To match that uh, spacer, you've got to go with a lower voltage blue. The lower voltage blue is much more finger prone. That's why you don't see me doing that color. I don't like doing things that are terribly fingerprint prone. There are certain colors like bronze that sells really nicely. So you're going to see me doing a lot of bronze even though it does fingerprint up some. But this is a really cool looking knife. I like the blue sanded patina look. Looks really sharp on this. As you can see when you get up close, they've got all the milling lines in there. Uh, in the top and in the bottom area. It's all channeled out. Just a lot of really cool effects and uh, different layers to this knife. As I play more with these, I might try and do some different colored anodizing on those milled areas. Match them maybe to the flat. But there'll be a number of different things coming out as far as what I'm going to do with these. Um, I don't think I showed lock up on. Oh, lock up on all of these is real nice. This one is just about perfectly centered. So, very good. Uh, lock up on all of these. You can't really tell because of the flipper being there. Is there you go now you can tell. It's probably about 15%. Nice and early. But uh, good lock up. Very nice knives. I'm happy with that new design. I had a feeling that uh, this one was going to be a really cool knife. Um, this is the one that I ordered the most of right out of the gate because I figured, you know what? This is going to be a money maker. Um, very cool design. You could never, at least the average Joe like me, could never afford a GTC knife. So this is as close as I'll be able to come. And honestly, it's executed nicely. The quality of zero tolerance, uh, again, they just come through each time they come out with a new knife. One other thing I didn't point out that I wanted to, screws are only on the lock bar side. So they screw in from the back side so you have a cleaner uh, scale on the other side. The only thing you see is the pivot and if you're a lefty you've got the two holes for your pocket clip there. So I'm sure the lefties are all very happy about that. Um, flippers tend to be a little hard on left-handed people, but uh, very cool knife. So very happy with the way these turned out. Uh, there will be three more that I'll anodize up. I'm sure I'll throw them in a video. I do have a couple of the uh, 801s done up. Nice blue bronze. I've got a green bronze and then I did a real cool uh, purple, no, no, a blue-green fade with natural drizzle. That one's not put back together yet because I still have to satin finish the pocket clip and buff out the hardware, the screws. But uh, you will see a number of new things 
For those of you that haven't checked out the new website, I have uh, launched a new store. It's a lot easier to find what's available on that first home page. You'll have feature product. Uh, those are the newest ones that I've done. And then just hit shop and it'll take you into everything that's available. I think right now there's like six pages of different stuff in there. Uh, some Moy Maz, bunch of zero tolerances, of course, some Riades, and uh, there'll be some other stuff coming soon as well. Well, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you on the next video. Again, website is www.jdcutlery.com. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I'm really happy with the new format. Hopefully you guys like it as well. Have a good one.